unbeatable for about 30 seconds at a time. Ladies, gentlemen, and tarnished of all ages, are you feeling weak? Do you need a helping hand? How about five or six of them? Each of them gently caressing your skin with moist towels, nursing you back to health. Well, today is the day where I can show you something simply incredible. This is a build that reaches 87 healing per second. Yeah, that number was correct. Anyone who has seen a method of regaining health without flasks in this game has probably thought to themselves, damn, I wonder if I can actually just use this instead of normal healing. And and for the most part, the values that these buffs give you are simply too low to fully replace flasks. The exception to that rule, though, is today, because while a good amount of these healing options don't stack with each other, there are a set few that actually do, and today we're putting them all in one place to see just how ridiculous it gets. As I told you, 87 healing per second, but now what you are seeing is that number in practice. If you're wondering about PvP, because, well, it's funny, the answer to that is if you set up your circle of safety and the enemy chooses to fight you inside of the circle of safety, you're basically invincible. They cannot kill you unless they're running a one-shot build. The healing is just stronger than an average player's damage is, even without you fighting them back. And of course, as these things are all healing over time, once you have activated them all, you're free to, well, fight back, or dodge even some attacks, at least for the 20 seconds or so remaining until you need to start creating the circle once more. The results of this in PvP, at least in my personal experience, is that people will either disconnect after ages out of frustration of an inability to kill you, and that is honestly the most common one that I've come across, other people will literally refuse to fight you inside of the circle, which you can still deal with by doing strafing runs to trade with them, then run back into your tiny healing corner. Look, I'm not saying this is the most honorable tactic in the world, but the rules of duels are no flasks, right? Not no healing, just no flasks. So if we can achieve a full heal purely through buffs and items, then this is just hilarious. And you can do that multiple times, non-stop throughout the fight until you run out of FP. The best enemies though are the ones who get so frustrated with you they just keep swinging trying to outdo the circle because the more they swing the easier it is for you to just launch off your weapon skill in this build prayerful strike which tends to do around 40 to 50 percent of their health well you guessed it healing you a large amount as well because everything in this build has one purpose keeping you alive now at this point i will say this is not the most reliable thing in the world it requires a fair bit of crafting you need to get quite far into the game to put it all together and well it relies on the wondrous flask of physic to not be overloaded as an armor set, but I'll be going over a version that is that medium equip load 100% of the time near the end of the video as well. But the result of the full thing is just hilarious. It may not kill the toughest bosses, but this isn't a build about offense. It's a build about showing them who is the boss, and in this case, it is absolutely you. Tankier than a butterfly, more regenerative than a bee. And if it weren't for the part where you have to reapply this every 20 to 30 seconds, you would absolutely be rolling in the bones of your enemies. The reapplication, however, is what causes this a little bit of issues. As obviously most enemies either PvE or PvP won't have any interest in letting you set up this circle a second time while you're already in combat, but that's sort of part of the game of this build. The thing is, 99% of the bosses in the game don't heal, and so if you have a constant source of healing, you will be able to simply outlast them as long as you don't run out of FP to apply it. That's the other thing. This build eats FP like all hell, but that's sort of what we signed up for, isn't it? If you want every single type of regeneration there is in the game, it comes at a cost. It and honestly, I don't even know if any of you will want to make this for yourselves for the experience of having it, but I think this is a really cool thing to actually be able to see in action. How it messes with the game, how bosses handle it, how players handle it. So even if you don't want it for yourself, I think it's awesome to be able to show you. So then, what actually makes this come together? What makes it tick? your health up. Sorry, bad joke. Well, let's start on the bottom end of the healing spectrum and work our way slowly up. One of our talismans is the Blessed Dew Talisman. This can be found on the secondary section of the Divine Tower Bridge in Western Lane Dell, behind a golem in a chest, and it raises your health by a whole two per second. Yes, I know when the total that we're going to reach is 87, this seems almost inconsequential, but hey, this build has a theme and I am sticking to it. We are getting all of the healing per second options that we can physically stack together. Next up then, when actively engaged in combat on our left hand, we have the Icon Shield. This one gives us a whole 3 health per second, which is a bigger number, but yeah, I know it's still sort of small. To get this piece, head to the Woodfolk Ruins in the Altus Plateau. Moving up a good step here, we have a nice little hard to find dash of war called Holy Ground. This one can only be applied to shields, and to get it, uh, well, you have to do one of the Chariot Trap Dungeons secret pathways that leads to another secret that lets you kill three of the chariots resulting in it dropping. I wouldn't be surprised if you had never heard of it before because of how obscure the way to obtain it is, but yeah, 
yeah, it does exist. The dungeon that I mentioned for those wondering is the Ariza Hero's Grave outside the capital city of Lane Dell. What this Ash of War does is put a circle on the floor under you for 35 seconds. That raises your defense, and most importantly for our purposes, grants you 10 health per second while active. We stick this thing on the tiniest shield that we own, the least weight possible, and then put it as the secondary weapon in our main hand, so that we can swap to it to apply the Ash of War. Then swap back to our actual weapon proper once it is already down on the floor. After that, we move to a proper body buff. This is the slot that has the most options, the most competition, but one undeniable winner, Blessing of the Aired Tree. This is an incantation with quite the high faith requirement to use, but if you use it alone, you may be disappointed that it gives you 12 health per second, though it does last for 90 seconds, which is really nice. The thing is, 12 health per second is a lot more than some of these, and once you start stacking them all together, every little bit actually starts to make a big difference. This healing incantation is found along the main story path in the Queen's bedchamber, which I definitely was allowed to enter. The man had cut himself on a broken window and left bloodstains on the Queen's bed. And then finally, the last two pieces of healing that make it come together are both peas in a pod, but very different pods from each other. The first is the Warming Stone. This craftable consumable can be found in plenty of places on the lands between, or you can just craft them yourselves once you have the cookbook also found in the Woodfolk Ruins in the Altus Plateau. And the result of these stones is absolutely an incredible 25 health per second for a 30 second period, but uh, for everyone. For you, obviously, and that's the theme of the build, which is why it is here regardless, but it also uh, heals any enemy in the area for 25 per second too. So, you know, this maybe contributes to why we struggle to kill things just a little bit. And then finally, a bit of a special gem, the Frenzy Flame Stone. These ones are almost exclusively crafted, and the cookbook to get them is in the same place that you need to reach to be able to even use them in the first place, as, well, in order to make these heal you, you have to commit to a side storyline of the game and become the Lord of Frenzied Flame. To do this, you have to defeat the boss at the bottom of the sewers under Lane Dell, and behind them you can whack the altar to open a secret path. In the secret path, as you drop down the rafters, there will be a corpse up here with a cookbook on it. But don't stop yet. Slowly drop your way down, or just jump, I guess. I swear that this jump normally kills you, but apparently today I'm special. In any case, down here is a big, fiery, covered door. If you want to become the Lord of Frenzied Flame, which we do right now, take your clothes off and talk to the door, and you'll be marked as such. Once this has happened, if you use a Frenzy Flame Stone, it will heal you for a whopping 35 health per second for a 30 second duration. In case you didn't have your calculator out during all this, that's two for the Blessed Dew Talisman, three for the Icon Shield, which is a total of five, plus 10 for Holy Ground, which is a total of 15, plus 12 for Blessing of the Air Tree, which makes 27, plus 25 from Warming Stone is 52, and then plus 35 from Frenzy Flame Stone is 87 total healing per second. Incredible, isn't it? On top of that, we also use the Great Star's Warhammer as our main actual weapon, which of course gives you a small bit of health every time that you hit someone with it. And on top of that, we put the Prayerful Strike Ash of War on the weapon, which again gives you a massive chunk of health on hit. The goal of this build is quite simple, yet very effectively done. It works, and yet it also it doesn't. You won't die until you mess up the circle, run out of FP, or your three minutes of winged tear run out. But killing within those timers can be a bit of a challenge. And well, honestly, for this video, I'm doing everything you see purely solo, but there is no rule saying that you can't use this setup while having a summon to just murder the boss the entire time, which would make it genuinely effective at progressing through the game if you want to. For the rest of the talismans, they don't affect the healing at all, but we've gone with Dragon Crest Great Shield for a good amount more tankiness, the Great Shield Talisman to assist our blocking with the Icon Shield, and then the Curved Sword Talisman to increase the damage of counterattacks after blocks, as this is very much a tank build at the end of the day. All of that in an attempt to also make this build somewhat good at killing. But uh, honestly, it just gets sort of okay at killing, you know? But this isn't about killing your enemies. It's about beating them on the inside, mentally, emotionally, and uh, agriculturally, because there's no way they'll be able to tend to their crops in this state. Being chased infinitely by an unkillable tarnished? The armor that we use here is the bull goat armor, just the heaviest armor in the game, and it makes us totally overloaded. So we use the winged tier wondrous flask mixture to fix that problem, which is found in the very north of the Altus Plateau region beside the Minor Air Tree. But if you want to not rely on having your flask active all of the time, simply use an armor set that lets you medium roll. The armor set is by far not the most important part of this by any means. You can even use something like Perceptor Salubis' set if you just want to. It just makes it more consistently survivable to have a heavier armor set to let the healing kick in properly. As for your attributes when wielding this set, 60 Vigor as a base for pretty much every build that you use is always the goal. Then we go for 80 Faith as we need a good chunk of that anyways, and as a result of our 80 Faith, we also put our weapon on Sacred Scaling 
willing to take advantage of it. We have 22 strength as the amount required both to wield the great stars and also the icon shield in one hand each. And then from there, your levels are free to fully split between endurance and mind. Endurance lets you block and attack more while using this and mind simply allows you a larger pool to work from of FP and thus keep the cycle of circles going even longer within your number of flasks. All in all, this build is a mixed bag. It does exactly what I wanted it to do. It heals you like nothing else could possibly dream of in the game. It makes human players visibly frustrated, and it essentially turns you into your own kind of boss. And more than anything else, it was a ton of fun to put together and watch actually work once it was all set up properly. Whether you plan on using this yourself or just enjoyed checking out the concept, I hope you had a good time today. And, and hey, hopefully this inspires you to try out some more things that are incredibly weird in Elden Ring, even if they're not particularly effective at killing things. Like if you like the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye <laughs>